Subject Verb Agreement, Part 2. Avoiding Errors. Sometimes, the subject and its verb are separated by many words. When this happens, we need to check back to see what the subject is, and then we make the verb agree with it. Let's look at some examples of a complex sentence with a group of words that come between the subject and its verb. These historic pots, made by an expert craftsman, were found by an archaeologist. These historic pots is the subject, it is in the plural form. So we need to look for its plural verb. Made by an expert craftsman are words that describe the subject these historic pots. In other words, this group of words give us more information about the pots. By mentally removing this group of extra words, it is easier to match the subject with its verb. These historic pots is a plural subject. Therefore, it takes the plural verb, were found. Let's look at another example. The man, whose parrots were stolen, was a pirate. The man, is the subject, whose parrots were stolen, is a group of words, that provides extra information about the man. By mentally removing this group of extra words, it is easier to match the subject with its verb. The man, is a singular subject. Therefore, it takes the singular verb, was. Next, we shall focus on groups of words which make up a phrase or a clause. They often come between the subject and its verb in a sentence. But what is the difference between a clause and a phrase? A clause has a subject and a predicate. A predicate is the part of a sentence that contains the verb and gives information about the subject. Take for example, who bought the car? Who is a relative pronoun. The relative pronoun is the subject of the clause. Bought the car is the predicate. It contains the verb, bought. Bought the car describes the subject, who. A phrase is also a group of words, but it does not contain a subject and a verb. For example, on the grass. On is a preposition, and grass is the noun, but there is no verb. Let's look at an example of a clause that comes between the subject and its verb. The person who was responsible for a series of robberies was caught on video. Who is responsible for a series of robbery is a clause. A clause begins with a relative pronoun, who, which is also the subject of the clause. Other relative pronouns are, that, who, whose, whom. It also has verb and other elements. Let's look at another example with a clause, this recipe that uses lots of eggs, is good. That uses lots of eggs, is a clause. Within the clause, there is a relative pronoun, that, which acts as a subject of the clause, and a verb uses, followed by the rest of the predicate, lots of eggs is good. On the other hand, a phrase doesn't express a complete idea. In this example, there is no subject within the phrase. In addition, it has no verb, but a preposition and a noun. So it doesn't really make sense by itself, hence it cannot stand on its own. Similarly, by mentally removing the phrase, it is easier to match the subject with its verb in this sentence. One, is a singular subject, so it takes a singular verb, is. Here's another example. Oxidaisies, a common type of wildflower, bloom throughout the summer. A common type of wildflower is a phrase. There is no subject within the phrase, but there is a noun. In fact, the whole phrase is a noun phrase. In this example, the phrase describes the subject in another way. By mentally removing the phrase, we can see that the plural subject, oxidaisies, takes on a plural verb, bloom. So, in determining whether the subject agrees with the verb, don't be confused by the words that come between them. It is important to know the basic rules of subject-verb agreement. In written and spoken English, an error in subject-verb agreement is very noticeable, as it is a very basic grammatical error. Let's review the basic rule for subject-verb agreement. Basically, in a sentence, a verb must agree with the subject in number. So, a singular subject takes a singular verb. One football player is. 
Similarly, a plural subject takes a plural verb. Many football players are. Let's just start with some example sentences that are not too complex. For example, the soccer player juggles the ball. The soccer player is a singular subject, so it takes the singular verb, juggles. Notice that in this case, the singular verb, juggles, ends in S. He is a member of the soccer club. He is a singular pronoun. It is used to replace the subject that appears the second time to avoid repetition. The singular subject, he, requires the singular verb, is. Similarly, this player is a singular subject, so it requires the singular verb, has. This player has his own set of skills. If the subject is plural, it takes on a plural verb. The soccer players juggle the ball. The plural subject, the soccer players, requires a plural verb, juggle. The plural verb, juggle, does not end in S. They are members of the soccer club. The plural subject, they, takes on the plural verb, are. These players have their own set of skills. In the same way, the plural subject, these players, is paired with the plural verb, have. Let's take a look at two more example sentences. The soccer player trains every day. The soccer player, which is the subject of the sentence, is a third person singular noun. It requires singular verb, trains, which ends in S. The soccer players train every day. The soccer players, is a plural noun, it requires a plural verb, train, which does not end in S. Don't confuse singular and plural nouns with singular and plural verbs. You may be interested in the lesson on the rules for singular and plural nouns which is available in this channel. Before we look at some specific clauses, let's first of all find out why some groups of words are separated by commas and others are not. When a group of words have commas to separate them from the rest of the sentence, they are very likely to be additional information. For example, Peter and Jack, who attend the same school, like pizza. The additional information, who attend the same school, is about Peter and Jack. However, it is considered as non-essential information, because Peter and Jack is specific information. We know exactly which boys like pizza. In the second example, we need the extra information to help us identify who the boys are. Without this group of words, who attend the same school, we have no idea which boys like pizza, because the boys, is non-specific. Once we have identified the extra group of words that come in between the subject and its verb, we can then mentally remove it, to make the sentence less complicated. Peter and Jack like pizza. The boys like pizza. Subject-verb agreement errors, often result from word placement in sentences. In the previous lesson, we have focused on phrases and clauses that come between the subject and its verb. In this lesson, we shall move on to look at some specific types of clauses that often come between the subject and the verb. They are adjective clause, also known as relative clause. Related to this is the reduced relative clause. It is useful to know what they are because they sometimes complicate the subject-verb agreement by coming between the true subject and its verb. Once we have identified them, we can mentally remove them from the sentence. This makes it easier to determine the true subject and its verb. This can help us avoid making subject-verb agreement errors. Let's start off by looking at the adjective clause, or relative clause. For example, the man who was responsible for the burglary was arrested by the police. Who is responsible for the burglary is an adjective clause. It begins with a relative pronoun, who. The relative clause can be reduced by removing the relative pronoun, who. By mentally removing the clauses, it is easier to match the subject with its verb. The man was arrested by the police. Notice that there are no commas in these two sentences, because the clauses provide essential information about the man. Without this essential information, we have no idea which man was arrested by the police. Let's look at another example. Her dress that is made of cotton and polyester 
is really elegant, that is made of cotton and polyester, is a relative clause, or, adjective clause. It begins with a relative pronoun, that. The relative clause can be reduced by removing the relative pronoun, that. By mentally removing the clauses, it is easier to match the subject with its verb. In these two examples, her dress, is a singular subject. It matches the singular verb, is. Therefore, her dress is really elegant. Here is another example. First, let's identify the subject. This recipe is the subject that uses lots of eggs, provides a description of this recipe. It is therefore an adjective clause. In this case, the adjective clause begins with a relative pronoun, that. Once you have identified the clause, you can mentally remove it. Then it is easier to match the singular subject, this recipe, with a singular verb. This recipe is good. In the previous lesson, we focused on identifying specific clauses that come between a subject and its verb. In this lesson, we shall look at some specific phrases that come between a subject and its verb. They are prepositional phrase, participle phrase, and a positive, which is a noun phrase. A prepositional phrase is a group of words that begins with a preposition and ends with a noun or pronoun. Let's look at some examples of prepositions. By, on, near, in, with, under, over. Here are examples of how they are used as part of a prepositional phrase. By the table, on the sandy beach, near his chair, in the forest, with her help, under the sofa, over their house. Let's look at an example with a prepositional phrase. One of the shirts is stained. In this sentence, the subject is one. Of the shirts is a prepositional phrase, beginning with the preposition, of. Therefore, the singular verb, is, agrees with the singular subject, one. One is stained. Here is another example with a prepositional phrase. This jar of jelly beans belong or belongs, to Peter. In this sentence, the subject is this jar. Of the jelly beans is a prepositional phrase. Therefore, the singular verb, belongs, is the answer, as it agrees with the singular subject, this jar. This jar of jelly beans belongs to Peter. Another group of words that often come between a subject and a verb is the participle phrase. It is a word group consisting of a present participle, which ends in ing or a past participle. A regular past participle ends in ed. Irregular past participles end in several ways. Let's look at some examples of the present and past participles. Present participles, eating, talking, reading, studying, teaching, raining, building. Past participles, regular verbs, talked, rained, asked, jumped, laughed. Irregular verbs, eaten, studied, taught, built. Warn. You can find out more about the present and past participle in this channel. More details will be made available at the end of this lesson. Let's now look at some example sentences. The lady holding the flowers is, or, are, beautiful. Holding the flowers, is a participle phrase. It starts with a present participle, holding. In this sentence, the lady is a singular subject. Therefore, it takes a singular verb, which is, is. By removing the participle phrase, we can determine that the lady is beautiful. Hence, the lady holding the flowers is beautiful. Let's look at another example. The shoes worn by Jack has, or, have, striped laces, worn by Jack, is a participle phrase. It starts with a past participle, worn. Therefore, the shoes have striped laces. Hence, the shoes worn by Jack have striped laces. The next group of words that often comes between a subject 
and a verb is the appositive. The appositive is a noun, or noun phrase, that renames another noun right beside it. The appositive can be a short, or long combination of words. Getting a subject and a verb to agree, can be tricky, when they are separated by a lot of other words. One way is to identify the subject and the verb first, then read the sentence, without the extra words, in order to decide if the subject is singular, or plural. For example, oxidases, a common type of wildflowers, bloom, or, blooms, throughout the summer, a common type of wildflower, is an oppositive. By mentally removing the appositive, a common type of wildflower, we can see that, oxidases is the plural subject, hence, it takes a plural verb, bloom, 